is, is uh, on the Internet of Things, and I want to introduce the moderator for that. It's Josh New, and he's a policy analyst for the Center for Data and Innovation. Uh, Josh has agreed to jump in at the last minute to do this, and he has done a report on IoT, and he's perfectly situated to do it. So thank you, Josh, and take it away. Uh, welcome. Uh, so this panel is called uh, How We Can Make the Internet of Things the Innovation of Things. Um, and as buzzwordy as that is, I think that's a really important uh, discussion to have. So as we encounter, as, a, the, emerg as the Internet of Things takes off, as, as we get new applications, we also get new problems. And solving those problems will be a critical aspect of actually ensuring that the Internet of Things will be this platform for innovation, this enormously disruptive and beneficial thing that we all want and hope it to be. Um, so with me, uh, we have Travis Hall um, in the middle. Travis is a telecommunications policy analyst at the National Telecommunications and Information Administration's Office of Policy and Development at the Department of Commerce. Um, next to me, we have uh, Juan Carlos Zuniga, and, I'm, and I'm, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, he is the principal engineer at wireless technology company Interdigital, and he's coming to us from Montreal. Um, and then finally, we have Karen Rose, who's a senior direct, the Senior Director of Strategy and Analysis at Internet Society, a global organization devoted to promoting the open development, evolution, and use of the Internet for all people. Um, so before we get started, I'll let them each speak for a couple minutes about the kind of things that they specifically work on and their approach that they're going to be bringing to this discussion. So okay. down the line. Thank you. So hello again. I'm Juan Carlos Zuniga. I'm uh, with Interdigital, who is... Uh, company that has developed uh, advanced wireless technologies for over 30 years. Um, most of you probably are using uh, some of those technologies in your cell phones or at your households. And uh, I also happen to work a lot on standards uh, organizations like IEEE and IETF uh, developing uh, internet uh, technologies uh, and protocols that uh, similarly you use uh, and like Wi-Fi and IP, HTTP and all the things that you have probably seen when you browse the net. Uh, lately, I, I was uh, chairing one group uh, specifically working on internet uh, privacy, and uh, this is, was specifically for Wi-Fi technologies, but now we're expanding it in general to all internet privacy, and I coordinate the group between IETF and, and IEEE on that. Okay. Uh, my name is Travis Hall. Uh, work for NTIA uh, in the Office of Policy Analysis and Development. Uh, we are the uh, president's primary advisor on telecommunications issues. Uh, I work in the domestic shop. My primary focus is on privacy and surveillance policy, but I also um, am working on uh, Internet of Things, and uh, we recently came out with a request for comment, and I'll be talking a bit about that. Thanks. Uh, Karen Rose with the Internet Society. Um, I'm the lead author of a paper that we put out in October of last year on the Internet of Things. It's called The Internet of Things, an Overview, Understanding the Issues and Challenges of a More Connected World. Um, and in that paper, um, we try and give a, a, fair and, uh, a fair and balanced overview about you know, what IoT really is, the types of technology and market trends that are driving IoT, as well as outlining five areas um, that uh, we believe have some questions related to them in order to make IoT a reality. Um, overall, our view is we think there's a lot of opportunities with the Internet of Things, but there are some challenges that need to be addressed. And these are particularly important as the Internet of Things really promises to change the way that we work, live, and play, and fundamentally fundamentally change um, how we experience the internet. So the five areas that we um, overview in our paper are issues of security, privacy, interoperability and standards, uh, law, regulatory and rights issues, as well as the readiness of emerging economies. Great. So building up that and starting with Karen and we'll work our way, we'll work our way down. So what are the specific unique challenges of the Internet of Things that you know, we have to address and we have to fundamentally change how we think about these problems compared to just an extension of how we think about the internet in general. Why is it a, a unique uh, problem that we have to address? Sure, I think there are two good examples are in security and privacy. Um, as we all know, um, security and privacy issues are not new in the IoT space, but uh, IoT and IoT devices present some unique challenges that we don't always see when we talk about traditional IT security. Um, so, for example, if we're talking about devices um, and IoT devices, we're, we're aiming to, or what IoT does, uh, 
if practically is sort of increase um, computing power and put it in smaller and smaller chips that also have communications technology attached to them. So there's a lot of challenges associated with uh, running security protocols on small, cheap chips, for example. It's very hard to run uh, you know, certain types of encryption if the computing power is limited. So that's a unique aspect of many devices. Um, in addition, you know, these devices are aimed at being deployed at mass scale. So if you think about IoT-enabled light bulbs, for example, think of the number of duplications of that type of technology across different products. And if there's a security vulnerability, that presents a unique challenge. Um, another issue that uh, we care about a lot is um, upgradability. Um, a lot of these devices being deployed have limited upgradability attached to them, which means if there's a security vulnerability, it may persist for a long time. So overall, when we look at the number of devices that might be, um, that might be um, uh, deployed in IoT, whether you think it's 50 billion devices by 2020 or 100 billion devices by 2025, this potentially increases the attack surface across the internet with all of these specific devices. Um, privacy is another area, um, for example, you know, the, the real value of IoT comes from data and what you're able to do with the data in creating new knowledge, new intelligence and automation. At the same time, that's also a double-edged sword um, because data, when these things are in our environment, um, you know, these things are, are, are potentially uh, collecting information about us, our personal information, our behavioral information and much more. Um, so some unique challenges in privacy include things like meaningful awareness. Do you know these objects are there? Do you know what information they're collecting about you? Um, do you have a, a meaningful ability to control how that information is um, uh, being processed, how the information is being stored or exchanged? Um, uh, the ability to aggregate both personal data and behavioral data is particularly uh, an acute uh, concern among many in IoT, um, as well as the ability to express individual preferences. So these are just some of the differences in which um, security and privacy challenges differ somewhat in the IoT environment. And overall, we don't think that they're insurmountable challenges, but they're ones that we need to work collaboratively to address in order to optimize the outcomes of IoT. I can add yeah, to that. Uh, yeah, I agree 100%. Uh, in fact, in the in the standards organizations, we are trying to to attack those challenges, uh, trying to give uh, broad recommendations on how to develop the technologies, and we have uh, overarching uh, recommendations such as uh, data minimization, uh, data awareness, as you said, that the user should be aware. Uh, sometimes we find out that it's not only the consumers that are exposing the data, but also people are surrounded by, by devices that are not necessarily the ones that purchase the, the device. There could be a baby that was uh, next to the light, but that was turned on at the moment, or there could be a citizen walking by uh, a traffic light. And, and, and as we just heard from, from Deb, you know, the conversation being recorded. So all, all those are important in the sense that uh, we should be aware of what kind of type of data we are generating, the, the danger that we could uh, create by, by uh, allowing that, generate that data to be correlated and metadata to be generated and then more, more, more threats being, being attacked. So, so it's important, I think, to, to keep the data minimization uh, at most and as well to, to allow encryptions to, to protect the, the citizens. And uh, just really quick, uh, let me just level set in terms of the RFC. I probably should have done that in the, in the introductory thing. But uh, we are putting out the request for comment on the benefits, challenges, and potential role for government in fostering uh, the advancement of the Internet of Things. And really, we're repeating three questions over and over again, which is, what are, what are the potential benefits? What are the possible challenges? And um, what should the government's role be in uh, fostering those uh, benefits and then addressing and answering those challenges. And um, one of the questions that we, that we ask, and I think that this is really pertinent here, uh, the, the first question we ask is what is different, right? Um, and uh, there's some great answers here, but one of the questions that we also ask is, should there be some kind of, in terms of how the government makes policy, in terms of how the government thinks about this, should there be some kind of categorization, right? Should we actually do some kind of siloing, or should we be looking at this as a single thing? Because uh, there is a difference between industrial IoT and consumer-facing IoT. Um, 
but at the same time, there are many, like in terms of the privacy implications, but in terms of the cybersecurity implications, we might actually be wanting to look at these things. They might actually have much more similar concerns. Um, so that is one of the questions that we're asking um, because I think that there, there are nuanced and different answers to that question. Great. So with the, speaking of these challenges, most of the ones that we that we all brought up were hypothetical, and that, I think that's necessarily because the Internet of Things, as we're discussing it, is you know we're we're trying to be forward looking. This is an emerging set of technologies. We don't have a sensor on every street lamp yet, so our concerns about what those privacy and security implications might be are hypothetical. Um, so, and these are concerns that that should be addressed. And I, I really I'm not trying to advocate for for dismissing them, but we also know that if if you act prematurely on these technologies and, and set set particular rules to, to protect against fears that might not ever actually come to pass, that can have just as many unintended consequences for the technology. It could, could limit adoption, it could limit development of the technology, it could, it, could increase co it, it could increase cost. So without ignoring these, how do we address those concerns but without kind of shaping, without forming policy, without actual evidence? How, how can we kind of balance that discussion going forward? Um, I'll take I'll take a stab at just simply Other than submitting it. comments to NTIA. <laughs> well, um, well, I think that there's uh, two things with that, right? Um, the first is that, um, and this goes back to the, your, your original question and then our first question, which is what is different? And there are a lot of issues that are being raised by the IoT that actually we're already struggling with, right? That actually we're already working through and then we're already de dealing with. And so um, in terms of hypothetical harms, well, some of these things we're actually we're, we're actually already working through, right? We're actually already talking about, um, and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't talk about them within the space of IoT. But it does mean that we're already having these conversations. Um, and the second is uh, just to point out that IoT isn't the future, right? I mean, lots of it is, but IoT is kind of actually here in a lot of ways. It's, it's, we've actually already got a lot of these things happening, and it's awesome. But that does mean that some of the cases aren't hypothetical, right? Um, so we do actually have some things to work with and some things to start thinking about, some actual cases to talk about. That doesn't really answer your question, right? Um, which is how do we look towards the future and not where we are right now, which, which is a lot, right? There's a lot of things going on. How do we look to the future and how do we ensure that we're fostering this area of technology without, um, without, without, not, without it not addressing the, the concerns, so. Yeah, I agree with uh, with Travis. I mean, the Internet of Things is already here. Um, in many ways, you know, many of you probably have an Internet of Things device with you right now, depending on how you define IoT. Your mobile phone, for example, your Fitbit, for example. Um, I, my husband got me an IoT Barbie um, for Christmas, uh, which, you know, interacts and you can talk to her and she pulls down information from a database uh, over the Internet and responds to you. Um, so there, you know, we, we just had a discussion about smart cities, right? You know, and about all of the great um, opportunities here and all of the great implementations that are that are um, happening. So um, there are a lot of things that, that we can work on that look and say, okay, these are real models. I think what is really important in terms of the hypothetical conversation is, you know, I, I agree with you, there are, um, you know, sometimes you sit on panels and, you know, there's, there's, there's sort of all these doomsday scenarios sort of going on with respect to what might happen if different devices combine, et cetera. I think we need to keep those in mind, but fundamentally, I think we need to really get back to um, particular models for how these objects, how people and the physical environment and the data are intertwined and sort of interconnect with one another. So, you know, we don't have to look at every specific use case or every specific product, I think, if we have these sort of overall models about what are the relationships between these objects and what are these are the rules, technical or governance-wise, that, that um, uh, Govern sort of the exchange of data or the use of the um, uh, the use of the device. So I think there's um, we need to look ahead. We also have information that's here, but I think we need to look at sort of models instead of really you know focusing on scaremongering um, uh, potential scenarios. Um, 
I agree. I agree with all the, the, the statements. Uh, I think that uh, Internet of Things is definitely here. We are we're experiencing the, the beginning of this next revolution of technology. And uh, we, we can already see and, and, and start planning for, for, the, for the future. It's true that uh, we, we see that it's going to explode. We don't know if it's going to be 20, 30 or 50 million, but we know it's going to be a lot. And uh, to me, it's like if we think ourselves as of the be beginning of the transport right after the Industrial Revolution, cars are going to start rolling or they are already rolling. We just have to start thinking which side of the road they have to be on. And we don't necessarily have to worry all the way up to small streets, interchanges, stoplights, and if we're going to do roundabouts. We can evolve as, as time progresses in each one of the different sectors and verticals of the Internet of Things. But definitely, information is already being generated in different areas. And this information is being exposed on the Internet, and it's going to be stored there uh, regardless of, of whether we like it or not. Great. So uh, one of the challenges that that we know is coming down the pipe, and this is not a hypothetical, um, is spectrum. And I think that's particularly relevant to, to state of the net wireless, is that so whether it's 30 billion, 50 billion, however many billion devices in a couple of years, the point is it's going to be, the Internet of Things will be growing uh, at a pretty much an exponential rate. Um, and not all of these will be devices using, you know, transmitting a lot of data over long distances. It could be benign, uh, you know, very small amounts of data. Uh, it could be, you know, just operating in someone's house on their Wi-Fi network. But the consensus is that we will run out of available spectrum to support all these devices um, for, for at least some applications, um, whether it's licensed spectrum, whether it's unlicensed spectrum. Do we know where that's going to happen first? Like, if we had to prioritize our efforts, like you said, we don't have to solve the entire problem. We just have to pick, you know, we have to look forward and then, and then evolve. What is the first area that the government should be looking at for, for addressing spectrum, spectrum concerns? Is there a particular application where at most risk of a, of a bottleneck and device failure um, are, are certain uh, bands of spectrum already under, under far too heavy a load to accommodate all these devices? Um, well, I think that, uh, first of all, probably, uh, we can we cannot uh, for sure say which part of which vertical is going to be the one that will struggle the most. What we can uh, do though is base ourselves on on actual facts. Like uh, we've seen the explosion of, of Wi-Fi, right? And, and traffic so far as uh, as of last year, it was something around 16 times more internet traffic on Wi-Fi than on cellular, for instance, for for uh, internet data. So this uh, tells us that uh, the fact that uh, a good frequency band in the lower part of the spectrum uh, was uh, able to be harmonized across different uh, regulatory domains was definitely a successful story that we should learn upon. Uh, for the Internet of Things, uh, a lot of these uh, smart cities, agricultural and so on uh, use cases require the, the radio signal to travel very far. So that cannot happen in any part of the spectrum. It has to be in the lower parts of the spectrum. And since we don't know how many devices and what type of technologies are going to be there, allowing for some shared use of the spectrum, similar to what happened in Wi-Fi that was regulated for certain bands, I think that that's a, that's a useful experience that, that we can learn upon. Uh, the, the, the fact that Internet of Things is most likely going to be a, a not a broadband, but a narrow band, tells us that maybe we don't need to look for big chunks of spectrum, maybe small parts of the spectrum can be used. And nowadays we have uh, very interesting technologies that allows us to configure and use parts of the spectrum that were left off, for, in for instance, from the TV, radio, uh, TV broadcasting uh, that moved from analog to digital and left bits and pieces here and there. Or uh, uh, again, lower parts of the spectrum below three gigahertz that are, are very useful for these type of applications. Great. Um, so we're about halfway through the panel. So for the second half, I want to focus more on, uh, on uh, policy-oriented questions. So, so what we can do to, to have Congress and the administration support, turn the Internet of Things into the innovation of things. So, so going back to, to the, white, the, the request for comments, Travis, um, why is the Department of Com Commerce spearheading this effort? Why is it not a consumer protection regulator? Why is it not the FCC? Why, why, is, it, uh, why is it commerce? Great. Uh, so uh, I think that's a great question. I think it's a totally legitimate question. And I think that, um, first off, I think that uh, we are spearheading this particular effort, um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't similar parallel uh, activities happening uh, across across the federal government. Uh, so what we are doing uh, is we are, we are doing 
a similar work stream as to what we did uh, with privacy, with cybersecurity, and with intellectual property. And these were all done under uh, the auspices of the Internet Policy Task Force. And now we also have the Digital Economy Leadership uh, Team, uh, the DELT, uh, which is focused less on those horizontals, those intellectual property, cross-cutting, you know, cybersecurity, privacy, uh, but then also on these technology verticals. Um, uh, so this is our first our per first work stream that is uh, focused on this vertical. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be producing an agenda spotting issue, uh, uh, issue spotting agenda setting uh, green paper, uh, which is insider terminology to a certain extent, but it's basically what uh, the Department of Commerce sees as the issues and what we think the agenda needs to be. Uh, and traditionally that has turned into a white paper, which is actually a statement of administration policy, and we're hopeful that that will happen uh, here as well. Why commerce? Why we're doing this? In addition to having that experience with uh, doing these work streams in privacy, cybersecurity, intellectual property, and also the multi-stakeholder processes in privacy and cybersecurity, um, we also have a lot of expertise. Um, NIST, the Global Cities Challenge that uh, was mentioned earlier, uh, as well as the uh, Cyber Physical Systems Reference Architecture. Um, we have uh, activities happening with our International Trade Administration. And our organization, NTIA, uh, actually has um, uh, not only the cybersecurity and uh, privacy uh, expertise, but we also have a, um, a lab out in Boulder uh, where we do spectrum testing. And one of the pro one of the one of the upcoming projects is the Model Cities project, where we are actually like going to be working on testing exactly those spectrum questions and issues. Um, in addition to the expertise that we're bringing to the table, we also bring a whole of whole of economy perspective. And um, our uh, sister agencies all have really important, very specific missions. Um, your perspective that allows us to. Um, pursuant to my earlier questions about siloing, allows us to look at IoT as kind of a whole. That is why, that is why we're spearheading this particular issue. Uh, we have the expertise, we have the experience, and, um, and we're hopeful to bring in a unique perspective to the, to the question. And Karen, I, I want to invite you to follow up and not pit you against Travis, but you, you've, you've talked to me before about how you think that when we're talking about the Internet of Things from on a, on, a, on a policy level, that not enough groups are really brought to the table to reflect the diversity of applications, the diversity of opinions um, that will have to be involved to shape this policy constructively. So do you agree that commerce is the right department to be heading it, or what, what would you recommend going forward that, that they consider? Who else should be at that table having those discussions? Well, I think one of the challenges with, the I, with IoT is that it literally touches everything, right? If we look out into the future, we're really looking at the reality of a hyper-connected world. So this question about whether or not to look at issues from a vertical, smart cities or smart cars sort of separately, or to whether to look at sort of IoT more holistically is a really big challenge. And because it does touch everything, it touches you know, a world of interest. There's technical issues. We talked about here, you know, also spectrum engineering issues. There are um, human rights concerns that are being raised, um, civil society concerns being raised about IoT, policy, legal. Um, for this issue, and given how broad and how expansive it is, it is going to really require taking a look at these issues. Um, one of the other things that I've noticed as well is that it's really, really difficult to figure out whether it is within a government agency, whether it's across industry, what is actually happening, what are the papers, what are the guidelines being put out. Um, it's a, another a really great and really interesting set of potential policy principles on, on, on IoT um, coming from industry, coming from an industry group. So I think the key in any, you know, whatever department um, does it, I think is uh, really key to have open processes, have processes that allow stakeholders to, you know, come together to exchange information, um, as well as to look at this issue from the many different dimensions, because it is really a um, complicated issue. It does touch everything, but it's really important that we sort of get this right. We don't move too fast. We don't move too slow, because we really want to make sure, in our perspective, is that we get to take advantage of the benefits and the opportunities of IoT while limiting and managing the challenges. And, and that's the key um, overall. Um, so we have the NTIA request for comments uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, the Senate introduced the, the Bipartisan Digit Act, and it, the acronym is Developing Innovation and Growing the Internet of Things Act. So it's, a, it's another good acronym for an acronym. Um, 
And it would, it would essentially do the same thing that NTI's request for comments is, is setting out to accomplish. It would, it would direct the Secretary of Commerce to convene a series of working groups with, with uh, like a half a dozen federal agencies, um, industry groups, consumer, consumer groups, um, and just basically talk about the things they need to address, like actually figure out what these problems and benefits are. Um, also, we, we have a, a House Internet of Things caucus, and over the past year or so, the House and Senate have passed resolutions kind of recognizing that the Internet of Things is important, we should figure out how the government can do a better job supporting it. That all being said, as someone who works in the space, the, you know, the overwhelming guess is that policymakers still don't quite have a handle on just how important this is or just where they even need to be looking to start. Do you guys agree? And if so, where, what's the, the I think, the biggest concern or the, the biggest foundational gap in policymakers' knowledge in terms of this technology that they really need to start addressing? Um, well, I'm probably the, the one less familiar with the uh, uh, U.S. specific. Well, from, from, from a more international perspective, too, I think no, that'd be but, really important. But still, I mean, from, from more international, we, we are aware of the, for, for instance, this FTC uh, report on, on IoT that, that provides very, very good uh, guidelines and, and recommendations on, on how to how to proceed in, in terms of legislation. And, and actually, it's, it's very encouraging to see that this dialogue is taking place already. Uh, in the U.S., because as we know, the, the U.S. is going to drive this technology throughout the world. So uh, I think that this is an excellent start, and uh, you know, I, uh, from a foreign point of view, I just hope that this dialogue continues and it, it does provide some some meaningful results uh, soon enough. Um, I would say that there's definitely uh, significant interest, and there's significant, and many people do actually think that it's important. I think that my favorite commentary so far on uh, the RFC was um, uh, someone from Australia saying, hooray, the government is finally looking at IoT. Too bad it's not ours. <laughs> and um, that being said, there's, uh, so with the three questions that we're asking kind of in repetition, the benefits, the challenges, the role of government, the most important question that we're asking is what you think, what the commenters think, what the stakeholders think the role of government should be. Um, and, a per and we have laid out in our questions what we think important areas are, right? We've, laid, we've talked, we ask about privacy, we talk about private uh, cybersecurity, we ask about international engagement, we ask about questions of equity, which were raised in the last panel. Uh, we, we ask questions about technical specifications like um, uh, spectrum, et cetera. Um, but that being said, the answer to those questions about what the benefits challenges are, in terms of what the government's role should be, it can, a legitimate answer can be none, right? A legitimate answer can be that the proper role of, uh, and, and keeping in mind that our primary focus is on what the proper role of the Department of Commerce should be, right? But looking at it a little bit big picture, bigger picture too, the, pro the, the, the possible answer is to say, actually it should be less than, right? And not to say that it should always be none in all cases, but that in certain circumstances that that can actually be a legitimate answer. Um, and we, don't have the answers yet, right? This is why we're doing the request of comment first. We, we have thoughts, we have opinions, we have expertise, but really we want to hear from as diverse and as large a set of stakeholders as possible. And, um, and I really take to heart what you were saying about it being open and including as many people as possible. And so I'm, I'm one of the reasons I'm here is I'm trying to sp spread the gospel that I want as many people to comment and to, and to tell us what you think. Um, because we have ideas, but we really want to hear from you because that is actually going to be the foundation and the basis of what we write our paper on. I think information and um, understanding about what IoT is um, at the basic level is, is really important. Um, we've tried to do our part at the Internet Society with our paper to lay things out in uh, an unbiased and as factual um, way as we could um, because there's a lot of information, there's a lot of misinformation on IoT. Um, so really understanding what it is and what it's about I think is one of the hurdles. Um, another you know, interesting contribution, and I don't think it's you know, necessarily you know, just a government contribution. Um, to be made, but um, you know, for all of us here, is that it is really hard, you know, tracking down um, the various different efforts of what is going on, whether it is within industry, whether it is within government, whether it's in the research space, whether it is in um, uh, you know the the policy space, uh, in in technology or in standards, um, who is doing what where? I think this part of the um, challenge with this is that. Um, IoT is already here, but in some ways, and looking at the overall potential, we're sort of just starting. Um, we're at the early um, set 
a part of this technology development, and there's a lot of different activities going on. But I think that role, um, you know, whether it's by industry or government, uh, well, especially by government in saying this is what government is doing and who we think is following what, would be really essential because it is a very complex space. The more we can simplify it, the more we can understand, and the more that we can have a factual understanding of what's going on, I think it's better for policymakers and all stakeholders engaged in the debate. And then I'll try to squeeze in uh, one last question. I think we have time. Yeah, we got a few minutes. Um, so the, the, what the Digit Act would do, um, what we think the, the green paper turned into white paper, turned into official administration policy would do, um, and what the, the House and Senate resolutions have called for is uh, an idea that, uh, you know, my organization has written out quite a bit, uh, the idea of a national strategy for the Internet of Things, much like uh, 2000 or 2009, we had a national broadband plan. Um, and it's basically a recognition that this is not just another consumer technology, which I think everyone would agree, that this is something that has, has e enormous economic and social benefits, including for public sector operations. And as Karen, as you mentioned, there are so many different uh, moving pieces happening in, in such a diverse environment that you really kind of need to coordinate this approach if you actually want to deliver, if you want to have it uh, be effective. Uh, However, that might contradict the idea that the government's role should be nothing. If, it, if this is a concerted national initiative to, to advance deployment, to address these challenges proactively um, and to spur adoption, some might disagree with that depending on how it's specifically implemented. So do you think that would be a, a, a valuable solution that, that, we, that the United States or other countries should pursue um, or not and why not? So, uh, first off, just a little bit of caveat. Uh, I actually, I think that the question about it being uh, of nothing for being a pro is a legitimate response, but it's not necessarily the one that, sure. right? So, I'm, I'm happy to hear all responses. In terms of a national strategy, um, we, actually, we, ac we actually do, <laughs> not to repeat myself too much, we actually ask that as a question. We, we want to know if, if that actually does make sense. And, and I'll, I'll be honest, I personally don't, no. Um, I, I think that there are absolutely merits to that. But I think that going back to that earlier question about whether or not we should develop policy for IoT writ large or whether there needs to be some uh, categorization, there's some kind of like other types of nuance, that might inflect that. Um, and so I'm, really on the edge of my seat, um, wanting to hear what people, what, what the community, what stakeholders have to say. Yeah, I, think, I think the issue of national strategies is being handled very differently around the world as well. So for example, if you look at Asia, if you look at some of their national strategies on IO. Um, wanting to hear what people, what, what the community, what stakeholders have to say. Yeah, I think I think the issue of national strategies is being handled very differently around the world as well. So, for example, if you look at Asia, if you look at some of their national strategies on IoT, a lot of those are aimed at things like, um, you know, uh, ensuring that their industry, um, you know, ha has what they need in order to develop a strong IoT industry. So they take it from a very uh, economic perspective, and also a big smart city perspective, particularly with respect to Asia. Um, so I think that there's sort of different ways to look at this this issue of what national strategy means. Uh, you know, one area which I am particularly personally curious about is the potential for um, some types of research con uh, contributions, whether it is, you know, government grant funding or public-private partnerships, to look at some of these technical issues about um, low power and constrained computing env environments and challenges like security, for example. So I think, you know, this kind of dialogue on where where government efforts are um, most needed or you know, people have most concern about government efforts is a great thing to have a conversation on um, from the perspective of the United States because uh, I think there's a lot of countries around the world looking at these questions and people are coming up with different results about what the proper role of government is. And if I may, uh, I, I personally think that there is a role to play. Uh, as we said, this is an exploding technology and uh, the government has the, the responsibility of, of both uh, promoting the, the economic growth as well as protecting the citizens. And uh, just again, coming back to the example of the cars, for, for instance, we do want to see more cars on the road. We want people to use the cars, but we might want those cars to have brakes. 
Otherwise, we're going to run into trouble and there's going to be a lot of accidents. So, so I think there are very simple rules. Uh, again, coming back to just saying, you don't have to become a cyber security expert, but just turn on the encryption or make sure that you don't expose personal information uh, on the web or you just don't store it for, for no reason or you don't just transport it or collect it or, or send it somewhere else. Uh, I think th those rules are, are pretty simple, and, and again, we can later on get more, more detail when it comes to the specifics of IoT and e-health, agriculture, uh, smart cities, vehicle-to-vehicle, uh, -vehicle and so on. But, um, but I do think that, that there's a role to play for the government. Great. So uh, please join me in thanking our panel today. Uh, we're going to be... Yeah. We're going to be uh, taking a quick coffee break, um, and everyone should submit comments to the NTIA by May 24th, I think is the date. May 23rd. May 23rd. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.